we're born with this vocab, all of us are born with this vocabulary of emotions, right? We all experience fear, sadness, freedom, joy, laughter, angst, whatever it is. We all experience them in different ways. We all have emotional intelligence. We all have that. This is by Joy Joanne Season 2. I'm your host, Joanne Chan, and every Wednesday we bring you inspiring stories, powerful messages, and fun conversations with me and my special guests and friends, and it's my personal mission to empower you to live and lead a life with joy. This podcast is for you if you're looking for more joy, courage, passion, and purpose in your life. Now let's dive into today's episode and get ready to laugh, learn, and live your life to the fullest. With over 30 years of experience in dance, teaching, speaking, and directing, our guest today has created The Power of Gesture, a groundbreaking somatics-based methodology designed to help individuals connect with and understand their emotions. She believes that by mastering our emotions and understanding those of others, we can navigate and lead both our personal and professional lives with clarity and authority grounded in truth. She's here today to empower you to remember the wisdom within your bodies and the power of your emotions, guiding you to live with authenticity, confidence, and purpose. So guys, help me in welcoming the leadership and embodiment coach and educator, Jen Ax. Welcome to the show, Jen. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming on the show today and you know, the first place that I want to start with you is that when I was doing my research and reading about you, you mentioned that society's definitions of intelligence make you feel limited in the past. So can you share a bit about your journey and how did you overcome the feelings of inadequacy and self-doubt? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, you know, it's interesting to really start talking about your truth and and being vulnerable in spaces like this. And I I'm really honored to be here and to share this. And I share it because I want to help others awaken their emotional intelligence and not be afraid to acknowledge any sort of insecurities or self-doubt that they too may have had now or along the way. So my, my self-doubt and the insecurities started boiling up in my body when I was really young, when I was a student in school, and it started as young as second grade and then it carried through middle school and high school and a lot of it had to do with the fact that society um, really focused on standardized tests and iq scores and the way information was also taught when i was growing up was very linear it was very much the book and it, everything was by the book and everything was teaching to the test so it was structured in this way that did not sit well in my body. I didn't really resonate with the information being taught because it wasn't speaking to me in the way that I could really hear it. So as a result, I didn't do great on these tests. I didn't have high scores and I struggled in school. I didn't do terribly, like I was fine, but I wasn't thriving. That is for sure. And on these tests, I didn't do well at all. So because the schools were so focused on these numbers and these scores and measuring how smart a person is in relation to those numbers, I just, you know, I was kind of looked over and I started to create a story about myself that I wasn't smart enough, I wasn't worthy, I was dumb, you know, all these things. And when you're young and you really start, you start to believe that when you keep telling yourself, it's just like sort of perpetuated in my body. And so this went on for a really long time, for two decades, pretty much. And I had movement, by the way, during that time of self-doubt. I had dance, I had found dance, and I knew that I was connecting to something really beautiful and really profound. It dance allowed me to connect to myself and to connect to others, but it wasn't, you know, measured as intelligent. It wasn't dance and the, the wisdom of the body was not looked at as intelligent. So I kind of just didn't even pay it any attention. So in my late twenties, I had my sort of, you know, really dark moment when I was 
invited to a dinner with a very prominent celebrity type person. And I denied the invitation because I just didn't think I was worthy. I didn't think I was smart enough and I didn't wind up going. And I know that that's a theme that a lot of us can really relate to. We don't feel like we belong in the room because we're not good enough for whatever reason. And this was my real downfall. Like this was my rock bottom. And I couldn't believe that I said no. And I really had this felt this force kind of come over me and say, how long are you going to let society define you? Like get up and go figure yourself out because you have a lot to offer the world. So it was at that point where I learned about Howard Gardner and the multiple forms of intelligence. And it really changed my life. I learned about these different forms. I learned my strength, which is kinesthetic and emotional intelligence. And my life really just shifted dramatically from there. Thank you so much for sharing because because of you, I did not know uh, other forms. There are other forms of intelligence out there as well until today because, you know, like I said, I was doing my research. So I actually went um, on YouTube and searched, you know, what are the other forms of, um, you know, like... Yeah. To, um, yes! Okay. So that's how I, I also learned something today. And I also learned about my... Um, you know what? What I it's just I just know right because it's it's so obvious. Anyway, so before we talk about that, um, I want to go back to um your 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 story because you mentioned that so often we feel unworthy to be in a room or to be included in a conversation with someone. So, what advice would you give to someone who doesn't feel worthy of of being a guest? How can we begin to shift the narrative or limiting beliefs about ourselves? Yeah, that's such a good question. And I think that if you're listening to this podcast right now, I say go do what you did, which is look up that there are multiple forms of intelligence. So start by arming yourself with the knowledge that there are many forms. And because when we become educated on these different forms, we start to awaken what we resonate with. So we can walk into those rooms and say, okay, I may not be strong with linguistic intelligence, but I have interpersonal, like nobody's business. You know, like I know that I'm, I can connect to people and I can listen. I'm a great listener. These are forms of intelligence. So I think the first thing is really arming yourself with this knowledge and believing that this matters. And the way you do that is do the research, look up someone like Howard Gardner, Daniel Goleman. There are a few experts in the field. And when, you know, when we, when we see that research and we see that this is a real thing, we, we believe it. And then we can feel like a little bit stronger and carry ourselves a little bit taller. If you're in a situation and you haven't really done that research and you don't, you're not really armed with that confidence yet, and you're kind of feeling insecure. Here's what I do. I mean, I excuse myself and I go to the bathroom and I, I do my uh, gesture and I place a hand on my heart and a hand on my belly and I just close my eyes and I go in and just connect to my strength, right? Remind myself with an affirmation, I am worthy of being here. I am, I am, I deserve to be in this room, right? So having an affirmation and taking a moment to just excuse yourself, because that happens to me a lot. I'll just get kind of get overwhelmed. I excuse myself. I have a moment of quiet and I say one, you know, an affirmation. So to really arm yourself with one or two or three affirmations that you can kind of pull out at any moment to really start digging in, it's not difficult. Like the, it's not like there's a million forms that have been, you know, um, that, that are researched and taught. There's about nine, there's logical and mathematical intelligence, which is really about what, th this is the approach that people take mostly in school. This is about excelling in reasoning and like recognizing patterns, mathematical patterns. And a good thing to remember is that in each form, 
you know, there are people that sort of, it's nice to see where those, that intelligence can apply. So for example, like logical and mathematical intelligence, a lot of those people become scientists. They become mathematicians and engineers. And then if you have linguistic intelligence, which is around, you know, thinking in words and language and being able to express yourself with a vast vocabulary, you have like a rhythm of words. These are, you know, readers and writers and poets, you know, I could keep going. Is this kind of your question? Yeah, because it's, it's really arming ourselves with the knowledge so that we can align with what feels really good for us and then step into that power. There's spatial intelligence, you know, people that really see in three dimension. And these are people that, you know, they're really good at solving puzzles and navigating space. And um, these are like architects and engineers, right? So it's, it's things like this, like really digging into the knowledge so that you can arm yourself with confidence. So how can how can someone identify? Because I can identify right away, straight away, because I know myself pretty well, I would say. But I'm sure not everyone is is can can identify themselves, right? So is there any uh test or quiz or when people work with you, you help them define or identify their their special form of intelligence like they possess, like how does it work? Yeah, no, it's such a good question. I think for me, it's about just reading them, listing them out. And I actually have like a one sheeter um, that lists it out. So I'm happy to provide that for you. And, you know, people can kind of read about it. So, you know, I think I mentioned three of them. I think, you know, what I just said, if something aligns with you in that way, it's like, oh, I have that. I feel into that. There's there's kinesthetic intelligence, which are people that are really connected physically to their body, the dancers and athletes, right? I definitely and really understand and learn through the body. Musical intelligence, you know, people that really have that skill of performance and composition and appreciate musical patterns. So these are, you know, singers and artists. So again, it's it's learning about the multiple forms, which again, there are approximately nine, reading about them, and then feeling into what resonates with you and what doesn't. And that's how you can identify where you, where you land, which, which parts of those definitions really resonate with you. That's what I would lean into. Are they all considered as uh, emotional intelligence? No. Okay. No, they're not all considered emotional intelligence. There's two types of intelligence that Howard Gardner really um, looks at, which is interpersonal, which is someone who can understand someone else's emotions, someone that can like navigate conversations, navigate teams, families, you know, outside of themselves, people that are highly intuitive, right? That's interpersonal. And then, and that's, that, that is part emotional, right? And then there's intrapersonal, which is the intelligence to understand oneself, to appreciate one's feelings and fears and motivations and understands how to navigate themselves. So there's intra and interpersonal. And those two together really create emotional intelligence, right? Which is what Daniel Goleman really focuses on. So those are two. And then, you know, there's another one, naturalistic, which is which is more about like the environment. These are more like biologists and scientists. So I think I kind of hit on all of them at this point. But to your question about emotional intelligence, there's specific definition and research around emotional intelligence as that ninth one right and but what kind of makes it up or is that interpersonal and intrapersonal but i truly think that the thing is is that we're born with this vocab all of us are born with this vocabulary of emotions right we all experience fear sadness freedom joy laughter angst whatever it is, we all experience them in different ways. We all have emotional intelligence. We all have that. It's just a matter of tapping into it, 
allowing it to guide us, trusting the wisdom inside of our emotions. We all have that, we all share that. And I think those other ones, naturalistic, linguistic, logical, you know, those kinds, we, we, we can tap into those as well. They just might not be as strong. Some, you know, have a different volume inside of ourselves. But I, I do believe that we all are capable of turning up the emotional intelligence inside of our bodies. We just have to spend time doing it. And that's where the power of gesture, my methodology comes in. Sure. And that's what I would love to talk about next. Um, so the power of gesture is something that a practice that you have you have created. Um, so talk to us about the development and you know, how did you come into this, you know, the, the work that you're doing today and the creation of this, the power of gesture? Yeah. Um, so it really happened in the most organic and beautiful way. I've been a dancer and movement practitioner my entire life. So I've always been very connected to the body and the wisdom of the body, the language of the body. And when COVID hit, I started, I knew that I, I, was, I felt very called to work with people and help them heal and remember, remember the power of who they are, remember the strength during this time of this global isolation and so much emotion for all of us. So I started meeting with people virtually and hearing about their stories, hearing about their emotional journey, where they were and all of the things. And what I had found, my craving in these conversations was to stay close to the camera to like this and to not get up and dance per se, but to really stay connected to their soul. I wanted to feel them as much as possible. So what wound up happening naturally is I asked them to create a gesture with their hands that represented the emotion that they were feeling. So they would use their hands to embody the fear, the, you know, the stress, the angst, whatever it was. And I would guide them through and I kept saying, there's so much power in gesture, allow your hands to be the bridge to your soul, allow. And I just found myself saying it over and over. And I was like, the power of gesture, like this is a thing, because it was really helping people heal and, you know, process and remember and find hope and joy and all the things. And it was so beautiful. So that's how it was birthed during the pandemic in that time. And four years later, you know, I've worked with hundreds of people at this point using this methodology, um, both in person now and virtually. That is incredible. But OK, I'm not sure if I'm understanding the connection because, you know, that's how it was um, created. But what is really the connection? Because I, I am a podcaster, you know, I do a lot of virtual meetings, just like what we are doing today. And I, I realize I use my hands a lot. But what is really the connection between our hand gestures and our emotional expression like you, you know, just talk about? Yes, such a good question. So there's specific tissue in the brain specific tissue in the brain connected to your hands with the purpose to express your emotions, right? So that there is that connection right away, that from a scientific you know, perspective, right? But when you think about it, we use our hands, you use your hands to express yourself. Gesture is very natural. We just kind of do it and we take it for granted since we were born. We are gesturing with our hands, with our face, as babies, as toddlers, as adolescents, as adults. That is part of the human expression. And we, we take it for granted because it's just kind of what we do. But when you look at it and you realize that there's a reason for that, there is this anatomy inside of us. There is a specifically designed connection from the brain to the hands to help us process our emotions. So raising awareness to this is so good for all of us because it can help us really start to understand our gestures. I mean, before I started this work, I was just moving through life and gesturing and doing my thing. Now that I've raised the awareness, I'm much more conscientious 
of my gestures and how helpful they are in expressing what it is that I'm trying to say and feel. If someone, for example, if somebody reflects back to you and says, you're very loud, it's too much, like you gotta like relax your voice a little bit or something, right? You're gonna take that into account and you're gonna think, oh, maybe I need to modify and kind of, it doesn't mean you're squashing who you are, it's just this awareness of the presence that you bring to an experience. I don't think it's any different with with your hands. I think if you're constantly th doing this, right? Well, I think that could be distracting and it's a great awareness to kind of recognize why you're doing this. I mean, maybe it's out of frantic nerves, anxiety, right? So there's it's there's so much to consider. So is it too much? Is it too little? I think you do what feels right for you. And at the same, it's a yes and. And yeah. if it's too much, and if it makes somebody feel like it's too much, then you have to ask yourself those questions like, okay, how will I modify so that I'm not compromising myself and my expression? And am I, is it too much? Like, why is it too, why do they feel it's too much? So there's a lot of learning along the way in terms of how it works, because you were saying, you know, it's oh, yeah. having some question around that. So the way it works is when, when I meet with my clients and mm -hmm. they're talking about their day, or they're talking about a situation that's in their life that's causing them, let's say some anxiety or unrest in their body and they just wanna clear it or they just wanna move through it, right? I will ask them or guide them into recognizing where that feeling is in their body first, right? So it might be in their heart. Let's just say their heart is feeling very anxious. Then, so I'll have them in a meditative state, really acknowledge and look at where it is and how it feels. And from that place, I'll have them create a gesture that represents the energy of that emotion. So let's just say hypothetically, I've got the angst in my heart and maybe the gesture becomes this or it's like this. If it's like, you know, sometimes our heart like beats really fast and we're saying, so let's just say it's, or it's this, or it might be that, you know, whatever. I mean, everybody has their own experience, right? And what, so let's just say it's this. Then from that place, I will really allow them to feel this because it's so important to feel the thing that's bringing us down, the limiting belief, the darkness, whatever it is. And I'll, do, I'll have them do it to music because music really is a, another gateway to the soul. The gestures are like, I feel like a bridge to our emotions and the music really helps us go even deeper. So I allow them to really experience this with music. And the goal is to get to a release. Like where, where does this energy go? It goes out. So, you know, those might be the, their two gestures, this feeling, and then I'll have them really experience the release of it, whatever that looks like. It could, that release could be a million different things. So I have them move and ebb and flow and allow both of those emotions to really coexist because ultimately they're in a relationship together. So it's really a, giving our body that opportunity to speak and allowing the emotions to coexist with the intention to move it through our body so that it doesn't get stuck and also reveal the truth of who we are. Why are we feeling this way? And what is the strength inside of us to help us move through that and, and provide release? so that we can clear and and bring in more positivity. Does that make sense? Yeah. Why is it important to feel the emotion? As human, um, I believe this is human nature, we try to avoid the emotions that are negative, right? And so that's why I asked the question, like why is it important to feel instead of avoiding? Yeah, because that's where all the information is. You're gonna learn, why am I afraid? What's underneath that? What happened to me when I was little that caused that block, that caused that pain? Yes, you can make the choice to avoid, but then you don't know who you are really. You don't 
my work is about helping people really awaken who they are authentically. And if we avoid and run from our emotions, then we're running from the truth of who we are. And we're getting, it's a huge disservice to ourselves. I also acknowledge how hard that is, right? That's why the space is safe for people to really go there. But to answer your question, that's where all the wisdom is. It's inside of those emotions. So we have to look at them and, and peel back the layers to get to know who we are. Mm. And you know, because you are an embodiment coach as well, and embodiment is like the buzzword that I see everywhere on social media. So uh, I believe you just explained what embodiment um, is, right? But what does it, what does an embodied life look like on a daily basis? How do we know that we are living an embodied life? Yeah, I love your questions. Thank you. <laughs> and I love that phrase, embodied life. Like that's, that's really beautiful. So how do you know? Well, first of all, embodiment really is the realigning, the remembering who we are, what our values are, what we stand for. It's getting our emotions and our values in alignment right with ourselves so internally and living an embodied life to me is really living a truthful life it's being able to say i'm you know this is just a i don't know why this is coming to me but it's like if it's i've just been in this situation a lot where i'm like i'm freezing and someone's like it's not cold in here and i'm like no 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 but like i'm freezing and Oh, whatever. And then they, you know, they dismiss and they, that's like such a small example, but it's like living in that and saying, no, 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 you know what? You might be warm and you might be comfortable, but I'm actually cold. Standing up for yourself, believing in yourself, standing for your truth, that's embodied, you know, saying what you believe, expressing how you feel. And again, that doesn't come without fear. It doesn't come with full confidence all the time, but it's it's the willingness to stand up for yourself no matter what it is. So you gotta learn what you are first. So going back to your other question, you've gotta learn like why you're feeling the way you're feeling, and then you gotta do the work to stand by it, and then you're ready to live out loud in the world, bold, confident, with authority which is what I said in the bio that you read. Living with authority, standing up for yourself no matter what. As long as it comes from love and a good place, you can't go any wrong. You're just speaking your truth. You're living your truth. You're living an embodied life. Mm. And what, what, what do you think is the biggest, and since you have been working with so many people, what really is the biggest challenge for people who are not living their truth, being authentic? Like, Why is it so hard for them? Yeah, I think there's a lot of reasons. I mean, culture has a lot to do with it, how someone was raised, right? Breaking through those parental or generational norms that have been put on them to live a certain way. Breaking free of that is really hard. It's really, really hard. Um, coming out from trauma that happened to you when you were younger, right? It's That is hard to sort of rewire our experiences to get to the essence of who we are, that kind of gets in the way. These limiting beliefs, you know, that we've developed for me, it wasn't, didn't have anything to do with my parents or generations past or, or anything like that. It was my own limiting beliefs, my own story that I created about my intelligence. So it's, it's like self, you know, sabotage getting ahead of that. So I think though at the core too, a lot of the struggle for people to get to that embodied place um, initially is fear because we, it's, it's hard to look at our emotions, honestly. It's hard because so much becomes revealed that we may or may not be ready for. And so it takes a lot of courage. Because so what is the, what, what would be the first step? Yeah. Well, in the way that I do it, the first step would be to um, want to do it. You know, mm -hmm. you got to want to do it. You can't, you, this won't work if, if you're not ready. And how do you know you're ready? 
you're ready when there's something your body tells you. Your body tells you when you're ready. Like, you know, there's like a nudge or there's a feeling inside of you that's like, I want more. I'm not happy, whether it's I'm not happy in this job or I'm not happy in this relationship or I want more out of life or I, I'm feeling anxious all the time and I don't know why. Your, your body will tell you, your body will tell you. If you're going through life super joyful and happy and content and all the things, you can elevate that too, by the way. We don't always start at like this dark place and all of that. A lot of times, I mean, I can't tell you, actually, recently, I just had a client yesterday and she came out, she's like, I'm feeling like good. I don't know if I need this necessary. And I was like, let's amp up that joy. Let's like get it to the next level. So the session was phenomenal. Like she wanted to fly out of there and just go like solve the problems of the world. You know what I mean? So you can start from any place on the spectrum. I think it just depends. You know when you're ready, when your body tells you. Mm. So what do you offer? Like how, how, what exactly do you help people with? Yeah, so we start, you know, again, it starts with someone thinking, you know, I want more. I, I'm ready to like amp up my life, amp up my joy, amp up my positivity. Like I want more out of life. I want to find my purpose. I, you know, someone that's like on that cusp of like transition, not really sure how to get there, not happy with this limiting belief that I have, got to shift the narrative, something like that. So we get on a call and I learn. I learn what is going on and what the goals are. I also have a sheet, you know, someone fills out. But really we kind of, cra I craft a customized pathway for this person to achieve the goals. And then we just start, we start working, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, weekly, bi-weekly, kind of at the most. I don't like to put more time between the work. And, and that's how we do it. And the music changes every time we're in a session, depending on what kinds of emotions and stories and things that we're dealing with. And the conversation just kind of evolves from there. I also work in groups. So this is really beautiful to do the power of gesture in a group is so profound because it's the same practice of acknowledging our emotions acknowledging where we are using the gestures to embody them and process and celebrate and all the things but we're in a group and we share we learn each other's gesture so by the end of the session it's like we've created this dance with our hands, almost like choreography with multiple people with our hands. And we do it to music and it's beautiful. And what that does is it allows you to, to hear someone without words. It also gives you an opportunity to open up something else inside of yourself by watching them, by listening to them, by embodying their gestures. Oh, I relate to that. Oh, you feel that too? I do feel that too. And these gestures are like this added layer of awakening inside of a group, which is quite beautiful. So those are the two ways, privately and, you know, in a group experience. Yeah, I'm sure it's a beautiful um, experience for you as well. And um, it's, it's more powerful whenever, you know, there is some... Um not just you and the person but because i also do groups you know i know people talk about the power of community you know they are not the only ones um and so yeah thank you so much for all the work that you're doing now uh before we end is there anything else that you really want to talk about perhaps i didn't ask you or didn't let you i we've kind of hit on everything i just i'm i'm so I want everyone to, we all deserve to really feel alive and awakened and embodied and empowered. I just think no matter what our life experience has been, our soul deserves that. That's how we were born. And it's like my desire mission is to help people return to that place of essence and joy and love. And I just hope that for the people that are listening, that they come and experience the power of gesture because it really, really, really works and it helps you awaken to the truth of who you are. And it's, it's so beautiful. So I just really want to say thank you. And, uh, you know, I'm grateful for the platform. I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak with you.
This is beautiful. This is a new topic for me and my listeners. So thank you so much for coming. But before we end, we always end with our final five rapid fire questions. So ah! this is all the questions that I ask all my guests at the end of the show. So <laughs> are you ready? I'm, I'm ready. Fire away. All right. The first question is, what is one thing you wish you knew earlier? That there are multiple forms of intelligence. Beautiful. If you could live your life all over again, what would you do differently? I would be a journalist. Not a dancer? Wow. No, because I've been a dancer. Okay. <laughs> right. I did that. Okay. Interesting. What is something you're trying to learn or curious about right now? Uh, deepening my, my comfort and ability to reach more people. Hmm. Beautiful. If you have five minutes and the whole world is listening to you, what would you say? I love you. <laughs> no, because I do. I feel so compassionate and like I love humanity and I want everyone to believe in themselves so much. So what I would do is give everybody a hug if I could. And what I would say is believe in yourself. People to believe in themselves. Beautiful. What brings you the greatest joy? Dancing and my children. Wow. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much for answering all the questions. Now tell my people where they can find you, where is the best place to connect with you? Yeah, so my website is, it's easy, it's all my name, www.genax.com. And then Instagram is really where I spend most of my time so, you know, on social media. So that is at Jen underscore acts, A-K-S. And those are really the two places that you can find me. You can email me at Jen at genax.com. Also, I just want to say that I recently finished recording a offering. It's free and I haven't put it up yet. I have a different a uh, free offering that's on my website right now. So people can go there and it says, you know, start your journey here and they can download that. But I have something new that I haven't replaced yet. So if you want to email me, email me and I will send it right to you. It's really great. And it's 20 minutes and it really will introduce your guests to this work. Yeah. So guys, I hope you love and enjoy today's episode. Go for the gen with your website. I'll put all her links in the show notes below. Thank her for coming today and tell us what you love most about this episode. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss another episode coming to you every Wednesday. And I will always leave you the same way as I leave you with every other episode. Show up. The world needs you and you need you. Thanks for listening and I wish you all a joyful and amazing day ahead. Thank you again for tuning into Find Joy Joanne podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, take a screenshot and share it on your IG story and take Find Joy Joanne underscore podcast so I know you are listening. And leave us a positive review on Apple Podcasts if you haven't already done so. And remember to hit the subscribe button whether you are listening on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon Music or any of your other favorite platforms. If you love what we are doing and want to become one of our sponsors, you can send me a DM to connect and thanks for being here. I will see you soon in the next episode.